OK, so let's look at a little program we've got here. So what we've got is a file of pupil data. And if we just look at the file, what we've got is um, we've got a forename, a surname, an email address, their form class, and their date of birth, and then how they did in three separate tests. So what we've got here is a program to store all three, five, seven, eight little pieces of an eight parallel arrays. So we've got 100 of them, and I can see that just by scrolling down to the file here. And I've just used a variable, so I don't need to put the number 100 there all the time. I've got the relatively standard code that you're fairly used to seeing by now of reading it and splitting it now in the minute. Obviously, it's a comma-separated value, so we are splitting it on the comma. Um, other files may be separated on, on, on spaces or tabs or other characters. You would just change that one. And then I'm reading them to three par eight parallel arrays with making sure that my test numbers are cast as integers. Now what you'll see is that I've got to return an insane amount of arrays here. I've got to attach to return eight parallel arrays. So I'm saying returning my eight arrays there and in the display min I'm only going to find their minimum mark for test one and then I want to display all that relevant pupils details. So what you'll see is I've actually got to pass in the same whole eight arrays. There's a large amount of parameters being passed here. So we're going to look at using a record structure to, to mimic this. But first of all, we will just run our program and just check the value we get. So it's saying that the lowest mark in test one was someone called Leonani Burdiel. So we're just going to quickly check that that's the case. And she did in fact get zero. So I doubt obviously that there's a, a worse mark than that. So that looks like it is the final. So we're going to look at simplifying this by changing our file to use records. OK, so we are going to look at changing this program that uses at the minute two, four, six, eight parallel arrays into using an array of records. So one thing to note is that records are only available in Python 3.7 and above at the minute. So you'll need to make sure, uh, sorry, the version that we're going to use is going to use data classes, which are only available in Python 3.7 and above. So ensure that you have at least that version installed. So what we're going to do is just above here, Instead of using all of these record uh, arrays, I'm going to use an array of records. So what I'm going to do is make some space up here, and I'm going to paste some, just some dummy code I have at the minute. So from data class, import data class, which just imports the library, and class, and then a class name. So I'm going to make another class called pupil. And it's going to have these two, four, six, eight fields. So if I quickly just do a little bit of copy and pasting, I think all these are strings, bar the end one. So I'm just going to do a bit of uh, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to grab the um, fields effectively. So rather than form classes, I'm just going to call it form class and date of birth. So they are all strings. So you'll see I've got classical people. And so far I've got two, four, five fields and they're all strings. And we're giving them a default value of, of nothing effectively. Um, test one and two, three are numbers, so I'm going to need to deal with those slightly differently. So I'll just declare test one. And at the minute, if we look at the file that we're dealing with, we'll see that they're all integers. So our class will change, so it's an integer, and I'll give it a default value of zero. And then what I'm going to do is just quickly do a little bit of copy and pasting and change test one to two and three. So this defines a class called pupil with these fields. Think of it as a row in a database or a record in a database and, and you'll, you'll be on to a pretty good analogy there. So what we'll do is we'll create, just before we, we change our program, we're just going to create a new record just to test everything works. So we will create a new person called person and we'll say that they're a pupil. And then what we can say is that person dot and let's just change their forename to Jim. So this creates a new record, a new variable called person, which is of type pupil, which is our record structure. And we set the forename property to Jim. Quickly just change the email property to uh, something else, just to, so we can print off and just check, check that it works. So Jim at bob.com. Now to print that off, what we'll do is print off if we print um, person dot forename 
and I'll just copy and paste that and I'll put person instead of dot four name this time we'll print off their email so if we just uh, run that program at the minute I'm not going to press enter to do the rest of the program so you'll see we've got the person's um, forename which we set up there and the person's email address which we set up there so that initializes it declares a variable called person which is of type pupil and we're changing the forename and the email fields respectively to Jim and Bob.com but we're very rarely going to have one record because it wouldn't be worth worth uh, doing. So what we're going to do now is create an array of those records. So what we'll do now is just we will get rid of that. Now to declare an array of records, what we do is we'll create the normal array brackets identifiers. And what we'll say is of type pupil, and we'll open and close the brackets, and we'll say for x in range two. So this will create an array of an array called person, we might as well call it persons, of type pupil, and there's going to be two of them. Now this time, so we effectively have two empty pupil records there. So this time, if I want to change the first person's email, uh, sorry, forename, I'll do person zero dot forename equal to Jim. And if I want to change the second person's forename, I'll change persons one dot forename to oh, sorry equal to Anna. So that'll change the first person's forename to Jim, that'll change the second person's forename to Anna. And so on. So this time the the array the the array index is setting the pers the position in the array of records. So I'm just going to delete that code at the minute because we would usually use a loop to do that and we'll look at, we'll look at doing that in a second. So what we'll do is we'll just cut and paste that out just now. And what we're going to start to do is um, replace our parallel arrays. So at the minute we are declaring two, four, six, eight parallel arrays. So instead of doing that, just before I delete that code at the minute, and I'm going to say, I can call it pupils for example. I'm going to say pupils is an array of type pupil and for x in range and actually we've got a variable called pupil numbers up here so we might as well just use that but that could easily be 100 it's the same thing that means that we can delete every array that we have here now we'll need to do a little bit of modification down here to change the parallel so because because at the minute we had four name we had an array of four names an array of surnames an array of email and so on and so on so what I'm quickly going to do is change all of these to pupils. Because if, remember, if you look at our file, we'll see we had the forename, the surname, the email address, our form class, our date of birth, and then three test scores. So the first one was their forename. So instead of putting, putting it in the array called forenames, we're going to put it in the forename property. This time it goes in the surname field. And then the third piece of data was the email address. So we'll just put that in email. Then we have the form class, the date of birth. We call it DOB, sorry. And then you've got this, this is the test score. So that was test one, that was test two, and that was test three. So now instead of uh, reading it into the eight separate arrays, we've only got one array of pupils. And that means that instead of returning this big uh, um, list of arrays, we can just return an array of pupils. Now that means that we also just quickly need to um, change that out here. So we'll change this to say pupil array equals read details. So that will call our function called read details, which will set up an array of pupils, read it, read the file into an array of a hundred pupils called pupils, funnily enough. And so next thing will be is that display min will actually not need all of these. So we're just going to change the formal, the actual parameters. So uh, what we actually pass in is just our pupil array. 
and what I'll change this to is pupil details. Now, at the minute we had it going until the length of just a four names array. Well, we only have one array anymore, so we'll just change that. Now, we only ever coded the first test one. So what we're finding is the lowest mark in test one. Now, previously we had an array of test one marks, but this time we've got an array of pupils and each one has a test one field. So rather than saying if test one square bracket counter, it will be pupil details counter dot test one. And remember, we were storing the minimum position, so we should have really started that from position one. So we'll just fix that while we're here. And it's pupils array, sorry, pupil details at position minimum dot test one. And then the minimum is always equal to counter because we're storing the position. And just a few other things we've got to change is test one isn't an array anymore, so we change it to pupil details the minimum position dot test one and we just need to kind of change the rest here so it's full details at position minimum in array dot that was a four name and i'm actually just going to do a bit of copying here so rather than putting the four name there we want the surname field and rather than the email field uh, the email array we want the email field there and we want the child form class there. And same for here, rather than date of birth being a separate array, we've now got dot date of birth. So if we save that and run it, I'm hoping that we should get the same results as before. So if I read, press continue, so those marking zero by Leo Nanny Birdale. So let's just double check. Leo Nanny Birdale 5S2. Yep. So at the minute, we have now changed that program. Instead of using eight parallel arrays to use an array of records, we've initialized our record structure up here using data classes, which again are only available in Python 3.7. And you'll see that we have managed to reduce our parameter passing to one array of pupil details rather than the eight separate parallel arrays. Now remember, the, this is the actual parameters and these are the formal parameters. Now it's a good idea to have these different names so that you can reuse functions again and again. This means if I had a different array, so for example, say we read in from a different year group and you wanted to pass that file in again, you could just reuse your file. 